And welcome to Joe Knowles Field here at South Kitsap High School. I'm the Dr. Doc Parr, and we're here tonight to bring you some great South Kitsap High School or football action as the South Kitsap Fighting Wolves take on the Walla Walla Blue Devils from the other side of the state. I'm joined up here in the booth tonight by Mr. Larry Rowe. And on the other microphone, Mr. C.J. LaPica is going to step in and give us a hand for the student viewpoint in tonight's ball game. This is going to be a great ball game tonight. And uh, these two teams met in 1994. Obviously not the same players, but the same teams in that big bash at the Kingdom in Seattle when South Kids have won the state championship. So I think probably in the back of the minds of those Blue Devil players and coaches, they would like a victory tonight. Our partner, Mr. Roger Fossum from Community Television, did a quick little interview with the coach before the ball game, and I think we're going to roll that for you right now as the teams flip the coins and make the decisions. Okay, Roger Fossum down on the field with Coach DJ Sigurdsson. Coach, this is not North Kitsap. How did this game come about? Uh, as a result of uh, North Kitsap having a chance to play a team from San Diego and they scheduled that game last spring and then we uh, so we had to fill a blank spot in our schedule and and I know the head coach from Walla Walla Mark Yance and we had played in 94 and so we scheduled this game early last spring okay coach last week uh, heartbreaking loss to Wilson how do you rate this team compared to some of the powerhouse teams that you've had in the last few years? Well, this team's different for a couple reasons. One reason is we graduated 31 seniors last year, and all those guys had a lot of experience and were good players. And uh, this year, uh, so, we're, so we're young, we graduated a lot of kids. And then also the, the kids that played here last year as underclassmen had one-third fewer games than teams in the past because we didn't have a sophomore schedule. And so... They're playing with a lot of effort, but they just don't have a lot of experience. And so we see them getting... Here we are tonight, Joe Knows Field. I'm the doctor joined by Larry and CJ, and the South Kids have fighting wolves are getting ready to kick it off. Well, Larry, right, last week, the first time in 46 regular season ball games, this team got a D instead of a W. Well, from what I've heard L. about Wilson, <laughs> Uh, they're a great team, and they had a great uh, performance by Trufant, who rushed for 155 yards. And we, as we begin this game, kickoff goes all the way down to about the 10-yard line. Yeah, Walla Walla on the receiving end, and number 20 for Walla Walla, Toy Mitchell, makes a nice uh, little run back there to get a few yards, and Walla Walla is going to start it out uh, close to midfield. Well, CJ, what was the mood like in uh, school after that loss? Kind of an unusual thing. Everyone was kind of down there, Doc. You know, we haven't been beaten in uh, 46, and that's kind of tough for a school with so much pride and attitude that South kids have to take. Well, I know I talked to the coach beforehand, and he said, sure, the kids were disappointed, but he feels real good that they are going to be able to pull out of that and uh, be totally up for tonight's ball game. Well, it's not, it's not important when you fall down as when you get back up. So we'll see what happens with the Wolves tonight. <laughs> well said, gentlemen. <laughs> well, we got South Kidsap on defense and the Walla Walla Blue Devils starting out on the offense. Let's see, out there for Walla Walla, Andy Thompson is their quarterback. Our running backs, Jeff Holbrook, Austin Robertson. And uh, the coaches said that this was a fairly young team, but they like them. So far, they're 2-0. and They beat Richland last week, 27-14, just about the same score the Wilson beat South. Well, it looks like we have the same uh, basic kind of formation we have on our last broadcast. Looks like they're running a wing tee. Uh, taking it out to the flats there to the flanker of the tight end. And uh, so this should be a fairly familiar situation uh, that the Wolves are facing tonight as uh, it was the same setup we had against Cascade. So hopefully uh, the defense will perform at that same high level as they did in that game. Well, that was Matt Hamlin, who's listed as a wide receiver on the receiving end of that Thompson pass. They're over on the close side of the field right now. Thompson's barking at the uh, signals. The coach said they run a two-back offense, man in motion. And a handoff. That didn't go too far. The defensive line from South Kitsap has done a good job in the game that we saw two weeks ago. And uh, 
I think the defense has come along real nice. And the offense, I think when you're young and inexperienced, it's really going to show on offense. And you lose a few of those big offensive linemen. It gets hairy back there for the quarterback and running backs. Oh, I agree with you all the way, Doc. Their inner defense is always in there uh, attacking the quarterback. But when they get uh, to the outer range uh, and they throw those passes, that's where, the, that's where we start to shut down. Second and seven coming up for the Blue Devils. Again, a man in motion, Adam Hayner. And up through the middle, and that time they got some yardage, and it looks like it's going to be a first down, and they are in the Wolf territory. Well, look to me, Doc, like the defense might have been expecting pass that time. All four of the uh, linebackers, or the two linebackers in the Wolf positions, as they call them, were uh, four to five yards deep, and that leaves four guys up on the line there. Uh, I don't know uh, what the Blue Devils do as far as a percentage of passes and runs, but uh, they're a split left this time. First and 10 by the Blue Devils. Long count. Thompson finally gets it off. Uh -oh. He completes the pass. The man's got some running room. Oh, that was a great job down there by the defensive who stayed right on his tail and was able to pull him down at the last second. And that defensive player was... Yeah, I'm looking for the number. <laughs> Is that Reichman? I don't know, but the... The Walla Walla team is shuttling in their plays, it looks like, through wide receivers, uh, 21 and number seven. So number seven uh, is uh, Joe Wilkins, and he's listed as a quarterback. Also. There's a handoff through the middle. Fullback gets a few yards on that one. Nice five-yard gain. Uh, they're opening up some good holes. Walla Walla uh, taking this first drive down and sustaining it down to the 20-yard line. That was Austin Robertson, the fullback, the running back, actually, have it listed. So just give him that call of being a fullback because he looks like a pretty big guy to me, Larry. Second and five for the Blue Devils on that. Almost in the red zone for the Wolves. Thompson. Oh, come on. He's got a hold of it. And Thompson manages to stay in the upright position and throw the ball out of bounds to save himself a loss and it was 10 yards. Once again, a good job by the Blitzman. Uh, was able to hold on to that quarterback, wasn't able to get a good pass, and they got no yardage off that whatsoever. Now we have third down coming up here. Be a critical play for the defense here to see if they can hold them. Uh, if they do, it could be a difficult Field goal situation will be back. Yeah, looks like yard. looks like the ball's right on the 20, Larry. So they're right at the it red zone. Thompson gives it to the man going through the middle. He was stopped, and I think he is stopped just short of the first down. Let's see if the refs are going to bring the chains in or not. Austin Robertson. On oh the yeah, it looks to me like the D held by it's just about down. a foot. <laughs> well, a foot's a foot in the game. We'll take it. That's right. That's right. And that will bring up a fourth and one, about one foot. And it looks like Walla Walla is going to go for it. Well, as Pat said on our last broadcast, more grass to go. <laughs> Just a little bit of grass to go. Quarterback sneak. And he's through the line, following the center, and gets that first down. Well, this is one thing we did see in that Cascade game, especially at the beginning of the game. The uh, Cascade uh, was able to get some running yardage uh, on the Wolves. And again, last week, Cascade was a, or not Cascade, Wilson was able to get some running yardage going. Well, let's hope it turns out the same way that it did in the first game and, and that they break down here and don't score. Yeah. yeah, this is where the defense has got to be tough. Thompson hangs in for a pass. His receiver went down and he had no one to throw it to. So we'll take a bunch of those. Well, thank God for that rain this afternoon. <laughs> uh, receiver falling down in the end zone and no flag, so uh, didn't appear there was any interference, might just be, a slip. Might be good for us on the uh, defensive end, but uh, the equipment doesn't like it too much. <laughs> We've got second down and 10. Thompson up over the center, and again, he's barking out signals. Quick pass, oh, he's got the loop pass. 
Oh, it was close. The man was open, but just a little overthrown. Now, Doc, they had it. Everybody stacked up to the right-hand side, going for a timing pair. Uh, two-step, two, three-step drop, and just timing it for the uh, corner there. And the timing was a bit off on that. Yeah, he did look a little bit off on that. Uh, I was talking to Seward today in class. Uh, he's he's a little disappointed about their 46 ending winning streak, but his head's in the game. He's very determined, and he, and, uh, he said he's looking for his next uh, hash mark. Third and ten. Show blitz. Again, a long count. Quarterback pitch out. Yeah, nice defense there. He got a little bit of yardage, but nowhere near enough. It's going to bring up a fourth down, and let's see what they do this time. It was Austin Robertson. Well, on the defensive end, we had four and five all getting in on that tackle. Jimmy Newell, John Samuel, and Adam Seward all coming up to combine for that nice hit. CJ was our audio man last uh, game. Yeah, we got him up here in the booth now. He's on the other end of the microphone. I'm uh, happy to be here. <laughs> to remind all of you, uh, there will be a South Kitsap School Board meeting on Monday, October 5th at 7 p.m. at the director's office. The public is invited to attend. Uh-oh! And I said it's been a long count, and it looks like it was a little too long there. The first yellow hanky of the night comes out, and I think it's going to be a delay of game. That's nice to know. We'll take the five yards. Well, yes, indeed. That'll make a big difference. And I wonder if now uh, the uh, Blue Devils will consider the field goal. Well, I don't know, Doc. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, in the high school game, a 30-yard field goal is a long, long field goal. And it looks like they will be going for it. Especially from the hash mark. <laughs> and they're set up strong left with motion left. Well, that's better than being in a hole seven to nothing. A good defensive stand in the red zone. And now you get a chance to turn it around on the Blue Devils. Yeah, I wonder how uh, how they've managed to keep that moniker on the other side of the mountain there. <laughs> you get my drift. Well, Jimmy McCary is coming up at quarterback position. Uh, high formation. Two backs right behind him. Second back gets it, and he's got a little bit of running room. Nice blocking on the interior line. Uh, Nick Kenyon on the carry. On that play. Be stuck Stop by Andy Thompson. Coming up. For five yards. And if we can get it's second that, five uh, and five. Yeah, we can drive it all the way down the field. It's good to start off with a nice gain, get the confidence going, get the offensive feeling like they can take control. That was Nick Kenyon back that uh, made that yardage. Carry with the pass, short out route, and the uh, receiver is right on the 15-yard uh, line, and that was Dustin Booth. We'll see where they mark it. Uh, they give it the first down and move the chains. So they're working their way out of that hole. That's yes, enough to work and uh, keep it going upfield. Our quarterback, uh, Jeremy McCary, he's also got a 3.5, uh, up to a 3.99 uh, GPA here. So that's one thing, CJ, that really impressed me about these guys. There's a ton of guys on this team that uh, got 3.5 or 3.0 better grade averages. And that's just great. That's real student athletes. Yes, that is real student athletes. People got their head in the game and at school. That's great. And again, second man through. Picks up a few yards, and that's Kenyon. Well, Doc, uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, but during the Cascade game, that was the first pass play of the game. That quick drop. Quick pass to the wide out on the right side. Exactly the same play. Nick Kenyon ahead for two. In their first Kenyon opening win. And it worked well for them the first time. And uh, they did manage to gain some yardage on it uh, tonight. Good play for them. Well, McCary, McCary, Jimmy, took a quick look at the coach. To, I think to be sure that was the play he wanted. The coach calls the plays from the sideline. Pitch back. And that's Richard Cosper. 
He's Montgomery on the carry. Jeff Holbrook with the stop. That looks like about a loss of a yard on that play. And coming up third down, almost 10 yards to go. So I don't know, Doc. It's a little deep in your own ends, uh, end here to try anything too risky. We'll see if the Wolves would go ahead and try a pass on this third down, Tim. Uh, you never know. They may be concerned. We'll see how it goes. Uh, South gets up a very conservative team, very headstrong, very tight in their formations. I've always liked uh, our team here. Second man through again. He's got a little bit of yardage, but it's not enough. Almost up, up to the 19-yard line, and it's going to be about fourth and six, and it looks like the Wolves are going to give it up. And Elkanah Montgomery. Uh, had a real quick start on that and looked like he... Montgomery on the carry. Shot by Andy Thompson. And, uh, managed to stop it for about a four-yard gain. Fourth down coming up here. The Wolves will be kicking away. Another four minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, it seems like it's been a quick first quarter. Indeed it has, Doc. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're nervous. Nice you still got there. the buggy booze? Uh, the sure do. Fair catch. Uh, I, I think he had 10 or 20 yards. Nobody around him there. Well, you know, that, see that. Fair catch at the 47 that's by Toy Mitchell. That's a hard decision to make. Uh, you know, you're <laughs> back there all by yourself, all by your lonesome. You're looking up, so the only thing you have to go by is kind of your peripheral vision as it's coming down. You almost need somebody there to, to tell you what to do. So here we go. Devil starting out and uh, man through. He's still on his feet, but the defense held good there. Nice job by the defense. Seward was in on that. Adam Seward. Once again, Seward. Austin Robertson on the carry. Stop by number five, Adam Seward. Yeah, I like it too. In the uh, program here, uh, lists the uh, weights that these guys press, and uh, some of them are pretty impressive. <laughs> There again, uh, they do a lot of calling up at the line there. Andy Thompson, the quarterback. Oh, that time there was John Zemo coming up number four and just stuffing him at the line of scrimmage. Right into the numbers, stood him straight up. A great time. Matt Hamlin on the carry. Met and dropped by John Zemo. No gain on the play. And about seven yards to go. So again, the Wolf defense is starting to tighten up a little bit. Seven yards at this point. I think they might want to look out for the pass. Well, it's to the second man who goes nowhere. Well, they try to look misdirection that time. Doc uh, with the left back. Uh, Jeff Cornelius the right side. And, uh, by Brian Miller. They just weren't buying it at all. <laughs> the and uh, what is that? Uh, Four down, three downs, and a gain of two yards. So great job by the Wolves on defense. Punt gets a nice roll, ends up. Sean Reese's punt rolls dead on the 13-yard line where the Wolves take over first down. We want to uh, thank uh, the South Kitsap Advanced Video Production class who is doing the uh, crewing on this. Uh, CJ's in that class, uh, instructor Mike Downer. So uh, this is your second year in the class, uh, CJ? Yeah, this is my second year. Uh, it started from the beginning, moved right up to the professional class, and it's, uh, that's really a fun class to be in. Well, it's great that South Kitsap can offer that to the students, I think. It looks really nice. And again, second man through. He's got a little bit of running room. He's still on his feet. And that was Nick Kenyon. Nick Kenyon on the carry, driving ahead for about eight yards. Well, Nick had a real great game uh, against Cascade, and uh, Nick goes both ways. Now well, looks like they've got a sprint. Uh, something's wrong. He's limping. They've got a timeout. They've got the trainers going. Special timeout. There, so, uh, We'll take a little break. We've got one minute 49 left to go in this first quarter of action. The score is 0 0. I'm the Doc, Doc Parr, joined by Larry Rose, CJ Lapica up here in the booth, and the folks from West Sound Television. Students, students, production. We're very happy to be here to you by the Community Channels, John Will, DCI, and John Will. And they have a student
Gary's pass intended for Jimmy Newell. Coverage by Andy Thompson and Seth Cornelius. CJ, you said earlier there was a school board meeting when? Yes, I did on uh, October 5th on Monday at 7 p.m. at the district office. The public is invited to attend. Also, at Manchester Elementary School, they will hold an open house on September 29th from 6.30 to 8, 8 o'clock p.m. All parents and community uh, would be appreciated to show up. All right. Well, it's again great uh, that the uh, South Kitsap School District uh, has these open houses and these kind of things for parents to come, come involved in and uh, whatnot. Yeah, South Kitsap, uh, my own school, we held our open house uh, just last night. It uh, went very well. Uh, nice and fluent like always. Our school is always run very well by our new principal, Mr. Colombini. Well, Doc, uh, down on the sideline, Nick Kenyon is still on the bench, and it appears to me that he will not be back in the game. Uh, I don't know. He's got his head on right. He looks like he's in a fair amount of pain. Well, generally speaking, uh, if you do have that hope to get back in or the ability and capability of getting back in, you'd be trying to work out that sprain if that's just what it was. And it appears to me that maybe a little bit more serious than that, but we'll just have to wait and see. And the 
Blue Devils knocking on the door once again. Thompson holding it. He goes way back to somebody to pass to. He's chased out of the pocket by Jimmy Newell. And pass to Jennifer Austin Robinson. Adam Seward on the coverage. I don't think he's a real drop back passer, though, Larry. <laughs> He's had his greatest success when he's been uh, doing those quick rollouts or flares. Well, they seem to be focusing their passing game on the timing patterns of the kind of the fly pattern where he's not, uh, you know, it's one guy out there it's third and seven. just run by the defender. We got third and seven, a man out real wide, man in motion to the right. And it's going out to that wide out. He's got nobody on him. Touched. Walla, Walla, Blue Devils. Well, there's a quick slant in from the wide position. Matt Hamlin on the TD. And it didn't, you know, he got the ball about three, four, five yards uh, off the line of scrimmage, and there was a pretty big gap there. Uh, nobody could come up and put the stick on him. So, six to nothing, Blue Devils. Well, that was Matt Hamlin. And we got a timeout. Walla Walla is going to take the time out, I guess, and consider if they're going to go for two or one. Well, yeah, Larry, that, uh, you saw that man way wide out there, and uh, he just took a step out and came turned around and got the ball, and his defender must have not been able to stay up with him uh, because he had a lot of wide open space, and he found it and found his way into the end zone. Well, that's another, you know, timing pattern. Uh, if you're not playing a bump and run at the line of scrimmage when you're up there as a defensive back, or if, even if you are, uh, if as an offensive player you're able to jam them a little bit and then just break to the inside, uh, the, bat, the ball is usually passed at the break or before the wide receiver the makes the break. The and you really have to be on a guy uh, and, and let, if you're going to keep scoring or making that completion. Nice timing pattern by the Blue Devils, and uh, they have gone ahead now, six to nothing. Now currently in the state polls, South Kitsap is listed at seventh position in the Quad A schools. Team that beat them last week, Wilson, is number four in the state in the big schools. Walla Walla not up in that top ten, but they're looking pretty good so far tonight. And that's going to be Matt Hamlin doing the, no, it's not Hamlin, doing the booting. Point after is good. That's number 43, Sean Reese. That's a point by Sean Reese. And their kicker. Uh, Sean Reese is six footer and 180 pounds. Uh, also a junior at Walla Walla. Uh, he looks pretty strong when it comes to making them kicks and punts. That was a good looking kick right through the uprights. Right down the center. And it looked to me like he had another at least 10, 20 yards in that leg. Well, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's all soccer style these days. Yeah. No more of that square toed thing. <laughs> no more of that uh, Remember Dempsey, Dempsey oh, that's right. square toed <laughs> thing. Of course, Pat Summerall, the broadcaster for Fox of Johnny Madden, he was a kicker. He did the square toe straight on. Well, as they say, they're a different breed. <laughs> Well, South Kinsap, just like game one that we televised, uh, lets the Blue Devils get on the board first, seven zip at the 11.20 mark here in the second quarter of action. So it's time now for the South Kinsap offense to get on, uh, on the board and see what they can do. Of course, you, can't, you cannot put down our fighting wolves, though. If they've got the strength, they've got the determination. I wouldn't be surprised to see some fireworks here. Oh, yeah, and as we saw in that first game also here on television, it was the second half of that game before. It's like it's up really started showing uh, some good playing skills. Seward will take the ball. Oh, he's got himself a little room. And a bit of a seam. Adam Seward did a nice job running back about 20 yards on that one. Well, that's what... We need, that's what the Wolves need. Get a little return on it, get a little bit better field position. Uh, Adam Seward on the return. The return. Offense, a little bit Seward more. And, uh, and Adam we are Clinton marching on Berry. down the field here. They, they have opened up some nice holes in the line and uh, had a nice completion at the pass. And we've got wide outs on both sides with strong right formation. 
And that nice. goes to the man behind. Nice job by John Zamel. Well, Zamel is, uh, was very impressive uh, in my view on uh, the first game, playing both ways. Uh, and uh, the line uh, between guard and tackle that time opened up a very nice hole for John him. Zamel driving for the first down. Zamel's down by number 56. The first play Jeremy yeah. Aloha. And 65, Julian John Samuels Guardado. Been great. Guardado. He has a lot of that speed and a lot of that quick footing when it comes to getting that ball. And he's only a junior, CJ. Yes, indeed. Class of 2000 rules, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Elkana Montgomery carrying, stopped by Andy Thompson. Good for a couple, it's second and eight. 10 minutes, 35 seconds left to go. In the first half of action here at Joe Knowles Field, South Kidsap High School. What a wonderful high school it is. <laughs> Are you a senior this year, CJ? No, I am a junior also, class of 2000. Oh, all right. So you're going to graduate in 00, zero huh? Oh, you got to love it, class of the new millennium. McCary with the handoff. Uh oh, ball's Bumble. loose. And let's see. I believe the Wolves have it. Well, I hope so. There are a lot of Montgomery on the carry. Fumble recovered by Brian Miller. No indication yet by the referees. Yes, it looks like South Kids have recovered. They're not changing the offense and defense. Oh, very, boy. very close call. Very close call. Official timeout for a measurement. got a measurement happening here. Stretching out the chains to see if they did get it. Looks like they're going to be short by about an inch or two. Or as Pat says, a little bit more grass to go. That's right. Well, that was uh, very fortuitous for the Wolves. Uh, having that ball hit the turf and uh, being recovered by, I believe it was uh, four uh, again. Uh, John Zane was recovered that. I think it was. John's a very big drop. Oh boy, third and short. Very short. Well, I think we can probably with this formation probably see a running play, but you never know. First man through, I don't uh -oh. think he got it. He got shoved back big time. He's still fighting. That's Cosper, I believe. Richard Cosper yeah, on Richard the carry. Cosper. Good to like to see him fight, the but yeah, the D Kerwin. was just too strong. Richard was going up against about five of those Blue Devils. <laughs> well, he did take the first down on that oh, second did. effort, Doc. Uh, All right. Great, great second effort. He was stopped. Three or four guys on it. He spun out of it and kept his feet churning with those little tiny steps and came back with a great effort to make the first down. Richard Cosmo's got strong legs. He squats 442 pounds. Well, that explains it. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. And now to the second man, too, who's got some room. Just could not break that last tackle there. That's Roger Cooper Another good run to get some yardage. Feels like Mighty Mo is shifting a little bit here, Doc. The offense is starting to gear it up, gain some confidence. The line is breaking those holes open, and the backs are getting through them. That was Roger Cooper on that one there. Yes, indeed. So it brings up a second down, about six to go. Five on the scoreboard. And then again, the eye formation. Pretty classic formation there, Larry. Absolutely. Well, McCary's going out to pass. He's got the man out, and the reception is good. That's Dustin Booth. McCary's pass to Dustin Booth. We've seen that play Covered twice by now. Well, that's uh, okay on a second down. Three or four yards is fine on second Well, down. if the defensive back is going to play off the line that far, that you keep going to it until they stop. That's it's right. Well, hopefully they won't six. stop it with an interception, but uh, that's always uh, uh, the philosophy in football. If you got a successful play, keep running it. Keep yeah. running it until they adjust the stop. And again, you got the two split ends. On either side, they're on the right side hash marks. Hand off to Roger Cooper. Roger Cooper ahead. First, down, first down. down. Yes, indeed. Like you said, momentum may have changed toward the fighting wolves. Luke Irwin on the tackle. Well, 
Offense doing a good job here. Grinding it out. Seven Very similar to what happened in that uh, first game when we televised that. Seven minutes, 50 seconds left to go in this first half of action. What do we got coming up at halftime, CJ? Uh, yeah, Pat Austria does a little show for us on halftime. Uh, many of you in the community is going to see what, I, what SK is all about. A little bit of the pep assemblies, a little bit of tour of the school. Right. Pat Austria does a great job with that. And McCary with a downfield pass. He's got the receiver just off the fingertips of number 31. Dustin Booth. A very fast intended for Dustin Booth. It was, it was, it was a nice play right to the corner, and just a little bit too far wide long. But uh, Dustin had one step. He just couldn't quite reach out quite long enough. <laughs> well, uh, that's what you want on that play. You either make the play or it's uncatchable by the defender as well. Right. I've been impressed. McCarry's passing looks a lot better this game than it did that first game. He's really improved at passing. Good Montgomery move. with a nice jitter. Little Montgomery is going to go all the way. Oh, close to a first down for Montgomery. South Kinsap. Elka, Montgomery. Montgomery. Well, the, the, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the, the Blue Devils were biting, as they say. They took the fake. And he made a nice head and shoulders fake there, made the left foot plant and just cut back into it. Almost broke at 10 yards to go. We could probably get down to the one inch line before we, uh, yeah. for the first down without scoring, but Mighty Mo tells me we are going to score. The chain is right inside the goal line marker. There again, Montgomery working it through the middle that time. Montgomery, the Montgomery very, he's got the second second strongest pair of legs on the team. He squats 475 pounds. Man, him, That's man, amazing because he's probably one of the well, fastest well, guys well, on the team. <laughs> legs like that, you gotta be. <laughs> he, come, now, Montgomery. he comes out for a rest on the sideline. He's one of the returners. They've only got seven or eight people returning from last year's team, so that's quite a major turnaround turnover. Yeah, it's very hard for especially the inexperienced players, but it looks like they got their heads in their game and it looks like they're going to do it tonight. Second and six, inside over the right guard. John Samuel to the one. A very quick handoff. Uh, looks like it was a reverse pivot from the quarterback. Coming all the way around. Luke Canamata on the stop. The it's third. Opposite side of the yard. Rotated, turning all the way around. Couldn't really tell what the line play was doing. It was a trap or not, but uh, definitely had a nice hole open up as uh, Wolves knock on the door at the one yard line. Third down, one yard to go, and one yard and three inches to go for the touchdown. A little bit more grass. We got the band and cheerleaders giving some emphasis. Second man, he's got it in there. All right. Look at that. Roger Cooper, uh, junior here at South Kitsap, six foot two point five. This is height. Very big guy. There's actually quite a few juniors out there starting uh, this ball game and doing a real nice job for the Wolves. So that really looks good for next year's team. Yes, that looks good. Uh, when we get a returning team, get as strong as maybe last year, take us all the way back up there. It's a big show if we can't do it this year. I talked to uh, one of the coaches, uh, Eric Hissop. Walla Walla, and he said his guys never played under lights before. Apparently they play their games on Saturday afternoon or something over there, and uh, so it's the first time they've ever played under the lights, this particular team. Maybe that's an advantage for us, Doc. I think it is. There it is, so now it's good. I hear there's a lot of pasture out there. Left in the first half. <laughs> uh, South uh, seven, uh, Walla Walla seven. Walla Walla, the home of Green Giant Foods. Maybe they're not <laughs> off the, they're not off the grid over there, are they, Doc? No. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you know, I don't get over on that side of the mountains very often. They also have that very 90 degree weather there, if you like that warm weather, right? Uh, for about 10 minutes, I like it. <laughs> it was a long ride for them. They uh, came over this morning. It's at least a seven, eight hour drive. And uh, they're gonna stay the night. Oh, there we go. There's the uh, cheerleaders doing their push-ups. Tradition from SK. Point. Walla Walla we had said that uh, during the Cascade game. Yes, indeed. During the Walla Walla, uh, Walla, Walla they, uh, they came over. They're going to stay over tonight, 
and uh, to save money, they're staying in the wrestling room. Yeah, downstairs in the locker room, they're going to be camping out, and then they're playing the JV game tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. That's an interesting setup. That's right. I've never quite heard that, but uh, good idea. You know, they don't mind doing it. That's great. Well, you got to start somewhere. That's right. I don't Probably won't be much fun if they lose. I don't think the uh, pros uh, would want to stay anywhere other than the Hilton, somewhere like that. <laughs> Probably the four seats. So run back of about 15 yards. Actually, the fans have shown some nice run back capability on the kickoffs. I think maybe it's because the uh, kickoffs are long enough and it just takes that long for the defense to get down to pick up the... Uh, Roger Cooper on the tackle. It was Ron Vogel with the uh, return of the kick. Got a little bit of yardage off that, but nothing our defense can't handle. Well, Roger Cooper on the coverage team came down and shut down well. Very well. Thompson drops back three steps, looks outside to number seven, Joe Wilkins. Thompson's pass intended for Joe Wilkins, coverage by Jimmy Newell. <laughs> well, that's good to know, we'll take those. Second down and 10, coming up. Well, we have a situation here that we see a lot of times uh, in the conversion from the college game to the pros. A lot of times you'll see quarterbacks that come out of college who don't necessarily play quarterback in the pros. They either switch to defensive back or wide receiver. Number seven, Walla Walla. Uh, Joe Wilkins is doing a fine job of receiving. Uh-oh, he breaks outside. He's got some running room. And he's got a lot of running room, a lot of speed. Finally run down by number 23 for That's Austin Robertson. Montgomery. And goodness, Montgomery was out there. And that was Austin Robertson. Montgomery was the last chance for South Kidsap. Robertson was almost ready to outrun. He did outrun the rest of the team. So that'll bring up a first down for the Blue Devils at the five minute mark here in the second quarter. And they have gotten in the South Kidsap territory starting on the 40 yard line. And a whistle. Referees checking everything out this year. I guess the linemen are ready. They are. Thompson straight drop back, short, quick oh. pass, and a nice hit. Complete pass to number seven, Joe Wilkins, once again. Pass complete to Joe Wilkins. Well, that Adam was a Seward textbook a tackle right See, there. The hit, Larry. Uh, I believe it was. Uh, It's hard to tell from our view up here first. But, uh, it could have been Adam Seward, number five. It was a nice hit. I heard it more than saw it. Well, <laughs> you heard bones crunching. It was probably Seward. <laughs> Brings up a second down and a couple of yards to go for the first. Oh, a nice shot there. And that was John Zayner. Adam Hayner, the intended receiver. It looked like he just kind of had to throw that one away because uh, the only receiver that was near it had to put the brakes on and try and backpedal and <clears throat> went down to his backside there. Now Zayn will play on that inside linebacker. He found a hole to get through, and he certainly got through. Brings up a third and third down. The referees. Pause, timeout, are they going to readjust the position of the ball? Well, Doc, we've got a, everybody, uh, this doom body left on this. Three receivers split to the left. Look for it inside, though, I say. It's a short yard. Oh, nobody was fooled there. Excellent job by the South Kidsap defense. Once again, our inside defense, very tight, very strong. Austin Robertson on the carry. Stop Strickland by Jimmy was in on that. Uh, there were three or four Benjamin guys time. in on that. Mike Riley, I believe, was in on that. I believe I saw Seward get in a little bit on that. Yeah. Well, they will be bringing in the chain, the chain gang. Well, I don't know. We'll see. That's at the far end of the field from us. It's so going to be pretty close, I think. <laughs> pretty close. I think they got it. Yeah, it looks like they did. First down for the Blue Devils from Walla Walla, Washington, with four minutes, 10 seconds left to go in that first half of action. 
Well, they really need to tighten up here, Doc. Four minutes and ten First seconds. Down, so there's plenty of time to uh, eat up and to uh, uh, run it down the field. If they want to keep it on the ground, they probably could control it for that four minutes. So the defense is really going to have to step up here. Almost seems like a replay from our first opening game against the Cascade Bruins. Even the same colors. <laughs> oh, boy, a nice pass in the TV. Pass to Matt Hamlin. Two, I believe it was Matt, Matt Hamlin, Hamlin who scored the other touchdown also for them. And it was basically the same play, except it was to the left side this time. Matt Hamlin, a big six foot, 175 pound senior from the Walla Walla Blue Devils uh, football team. Well, unfortunately, Shimon uh, McCary got beat on that. Uh, he never did look back. He never did look back to see the pass coming, and he got burned. And Sean Reese's kick is, uh, they're waving it off. No good, so that could be helpful here as the game goes That's on. That's the point, wide right. Six. So the World Bowl Blue Devils will be lead off. Half. And it's 13 to 7, 3.59 left to go in this. First half of action. Still have enough time to show off a little bit of our stuff. Well, I think that's a play that uh, they can uh, talk about at halftime and uh, get that uh, defense just a little bit tighter, Larry, because those passes are they're high and they're very slow. Well, so if you turn around and take a look at it, you should get a pretty good idea where it's going. They're high and they're slow, but, but then again, they're timing patterns. They're dropping back a short, a short drop back and they're flying, they're running a fly pattern down the sideline. And, uh, you know, as a defender, you've got to watch the receiver's eyes so that you can react to the ball. And uh, Jimmy was in a good position that time. To receive Adam Seward and Elkana Montgomery. Have, you know, the wherewithal to, to get turned around in time because it was a timing pattern. Sean Reese to and, kick off. Uh, Good execution by the Blue Devils, and uh, we have now three minutes and 51 seconds to come on back and uh, even this up here. Or, that's right, because uh, they did miss the point. PAT. That's right. Reason to kick off. Uh -oh, that's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, I believe they take it on the 35 yard line, 30 yard line. 35. Can we come back to the 35 yard line. First down, Wolves on the 35. Yeah, drop. I'm not sure if they actually do have the option here in high school football. I guess I should be a little more educated. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in the pros, they do have the option of taking it or re-kicking it, I believe. But uh, the 35-yard line would be the best field position that the Wolves have had so far in this half. So they are huddling and going to try and make a move here with 3.51 to go. 35 yards taken, 35 yards game. We'll take it. Absolutely. Jimmy McCary, senior QB, and not much on that play. <laughs> that was Montgomery with the ball, and he just did that. That's Del Cotto Montgomery on the carry, shot by Luke Irwin. A little bit of breakdown there in the offense, but uh, I'm sure that's how kicks up. We'll once again arrive to victory in the second half if we can't do it here in the first. Well, the band is uh, doing their best to uh, get the crowd into it. All the woodwinds, the trombones, the sax players are all moving and grooving, trying to get everybody going here as the Wolves come to the line of scrimmage. And outside, Dustin Booth. complete to Dustin Booth. That's the third time for that play, Doc. And no, they're just going to keep going to it yeah, like until the it. Blue Devils come up and do something about it. So <laughs> that's, that's a really good strategy for the Wolves. There you see McCary. You, know, you don't see him on the television picture. He's just coming into the huddle right now, but he was over getting the play from the coach. It's a good move by Justin. Third and two on the 44. Get that extra one or two yards. Well, our camera people and uh, director Garrett, Garrett Sykes are doing a great job getting these shots for you. And a uh, uh, nice game by John Zabel. John Zabel for the first down. Stopped by Andy Thompson and Luke Irwin. Right, opening up His a nice hole that time rolls. for John as he uh, spurted through. Good quickness. Good game. John Zabel also has strong legs. He squats about 403 pounds. Ouch. <laughs> 
don't want to get kicked with, uh, with none of that. First down and 10 to go. Inside the Blue Devil territory. Oh, another nice hole up there for about six yards. Montgomery, I believe that was, uh, not able to make that final cut. That's Montgomery on the carry. Right, but, uh, beautiful Number Andy Thompson. Montgomery coming out along with Richard Casper and two other players. And they're rotating their backs. John Zamel in there in the back now behind Jimmy. Drop back pass up in the air. Oh, nice catch. Justin. Great job by Justin Booth. Way to get in there out in the open and get those. Well, turnaround is fair play. That's the same type of play that South Kitsap got burned on on the last touchdown. A fly pattern down the sideline on a timing pattern. So, uh, uh, good, uh, <laughs> good coaching strategy there. Giving it back to them the same way they get it. First down. Fighting Wolves inside the 15 yard line. Showing blitz. Now Montgomery with the ball, and he gets a nice gainer. Of about Montgomery seven to the eight. Another great run by uh, Elkanah Montgomery there. Luke Irwin the and Chris Stewart on the stop. Uh, they've had the ball a uh, little more than two minutes here with a few seconds, and they've moved all the way from the 35-yard line down now, second down, five yards to go at the eight-yard line, looking like they are going to put it in there. Doing a great job on the offense. They got a minute and 33 left to go in this first half of action, and it's been an exciting one back and forth. Montgomery up through the middle. He's down to the five-yard line. I think they have to go to about just past the four to get... Uh, Montgomery's going down. down to the five and a half. And bring up a third down uh, and about two Houston. yards to go. It's well, I'm pretty sure the Wolves have uh, one, maybe two timeouts left. Uh, they're just going to let it run here. Uh, third down and one, see if they can't uh, get their first down, and then I think they might be looking at a timeout. Yeah. As you said, Doc, uh, excitement definitely a big factor in a game like this, nice and intense. Well, it also helps to have the grandstands full of your supporters. Oh, McCarry with the quarterback sneak. A nice job stretching out towards the end zone. He's got the first down, so SK is going to McCarry on the keeper to the two. Stopped by Andy Thompson. A it's sneak. First down, first goal at the Wolves. Had him fake the dive. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was a beautiful play. Picked the dive in the middle there and uh, took it around with kind of a boot leg up from the right side there. Just a half a step away from getting to that pay dirt. McCarry very strong, benches 254, cleans 267, and squats 395. Yes. Oh, there it is. We got, got it. Welcome out and we're punching through. And the crowd likes that. Well, there goes the South Kitsap Band with the South Kitsap fight song, which happened to be my high school fight song as well. Except it wasn't Wolves, it was Vikings. A very popular one. And it's great to hear it right now. Hey, CJ? Oh, of course. The crowd loves it. The band loves it. The cheerleaders get into it. I get into it. Andrew Wilson. Uh, now do they have to do 13 push-ups, or do they just do the seven? No, they just do seven more uh, for the entire total. Well, we hope it's seven here if the PAT is good. Uh-oh, it's not good. We got a tight ball game. Looked like there was a little bit of a problem on the snap there. Well, I think the snap was fine, Doc, uh, but the place seemed to be bobbled, and then the, uh, of course that throws off the timing of your kicker. He had to stutter step it there. And uh, that enabled the Blue Devils to block that kick. So we do have a tie game here. Very exciting. There are eight seconds to go. A great drive by the Wolves. Three minutes and 51 seconds. And they take it down with eight seconds to go to score. Just a great drive by the Wolves. And they go over the push-ups. I guess they only have to do six now. They got one less they have to do here. 
I guess it makes it a little easier on the cheerleaders. Well, <laughs> I tell you, those those are regular push-ups, not what is known as a woman's push-up, and uh, they're doing a great job down there, as always, the great South Kitsap cheerleading squad. Well, eight seconds gives you time. Well, to do that, to that's just about it. Think we're going to get a squib here? What do you think, CJ? Adam Hayner and Toy Mitchell receive. Oh, looks so to me. A little harder to return that, you know? You get somebody to touch it a little earlier. The clock starts a little earlier. See what happens. There's yep, the you're right, and you're exactly right on that. Up off the player. Nice job, and at the... Well, no, I only took... Let's see, the clock's running now. Jerry I think they might on the return, stop by John Zabel. But... Uh, we got five seconds to Walla Walla. We'll have a chance for one play. I think they'll air it out there. Why not? Or do you just walk in, knee it, and walk into the locker room tied up? Well, I don't know. You know, it depends on the coach's <laughs> philosophy. Uh, you know, you do have the chance to do a fly pattern, maybe either side. There or it is, down on the knee, and the first half is and over. The first half of I'm the score. Dr. Doc Parr. The score here at Joe Mose is 13-13. We're all tied up. I'm joined up here in the booth by Mr. Larry Rowe and C.J. Lupica. We want to thank the great crew from the South Kids App Advanced Video Production Class, and we want to urge you to stay tuned for... Uh, a little halftime insert that the kids from the class, Pat and the guys, put together to show you a little bit about South Kitsap and uh, your own hometown school. So at the end of the first half of action, the score 13-13. We'll come on back in just a few moments. Stay tuned for that halftime program. Hey, what's up? I'm Pat Oshkia. I'm a senior here at South Kitsap High School in Port Orchard, Washington. For many of you that don't attend South Kitsap High, you don't know what goes on around here or what takes place. So for this halftime, I'm going to take you, the viewer, into South Kitsap High School and show you the lowdown. Let's go. To start it all off, South is the largest school in Washington State, with over 2,500 students roaming the halls each and every day. You've got to think that this place is pretty crowded. And believe me, it is. I'll show you some classrooms in a minute, but first I want to show you the administration office. This is where everything happens, and this is Eileen, the lady who answers the phone. You've probably talked to her before. This is where the deans, the principals, counselors, and everybody makes everything run. Without this place, we would have no school. You see that guy getting the crowd going? That's our new principal, Mr. Colin Beanie. One of his jobs is to get the pep assembly off on the right foot. This year, he taught us a new cheer. South, and like any other high school, is school pride. And boy, we're not short of that. With King 5 awarding South with the most spirited high school in Western Washington for two years, I guess you could say we have school spirit. Along with athletics and extracurricular activities is our basics of education. With over a staff of 160 helping us students in English, math, and history, there is also a wide variety of professional and technical classes like video media production, personally my favorite. Information technology. And building construction. These and many more classes are offered to prepare us for the real world. Well, that's a quick view of South Kitsap High for you. I hope you learned a little bit about South, home of the fighting wolves. Well, that's it for me, Pat Austria. I hope you enjoyed it all, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the game.
Welcome back to the second half of action here at Joe Knows Field at South Kitsap High School in Port Orchard, Washington. I'm the doctor, Doc Parr, joined by Mr. Larry Rowe and C.J. Lupica up here in the booth. And at the beginning of the third quarter of action, we're all tied up 13-13. The Walla Walla Blue Devils coming all the way over across the mountains to take on our South Kitsap Fighting Wolves. Our field reporter, Roger Fossum, is down in the field waiting for the South Kitsap team to come out and see if he's got a minute to get a quick interview with the coach. I don't know if he will. They really stayed in the locker room a long time. Must have had a lot to talk about, Larry. Well, uh, a lot of good stuff, and, uh, you know, you always got to focus a little bit on what didn't go right. Uh, <laughs> but overall, we had a good balance because we got a 13-13 tie, and... Uh, the Wolves came back strong in the second quarter, had a couple of really great drives, and uh, looks like they uh, should have some real good confidence going into the uh, second half here. Well, we have a lot of confidence in our South Kitsap Wolves, especially up here in the booth and especially out there in the stands with the band and cheerleaders. It's just overwhelming the crowd with all the SK spirit in this house. Well, another almost full house packed down there as it was in our first uh, competition against uh, the first televised program against Cascade. And we're going to be on at the same time, same place, 12 o'clock on Saturday, high noon on Saturday. And uh, this time we got two in a row to do. Uh, next week, the Wolves will be taking on Mount Tahoma in their first league battle. The uh, Narrows League is split into two, the Bridge Division and the Bay Division. It and that'll be their first person, first uh, opponent in their division. And now the South Kids have Fighting Wolves coming back onto the field. And we'll see if Roger has a chance to grab the coach or not. I don't know if they'll have time or not. The uh, clock is down to the 12 minute mark and we'll see if uh, he can do a quick one or not with the coach. Looks like the coach is coming over to him so We'll make it quick and hopefully throw it down to Roger. Uh, Walla Walla drove on you. You stood real good. But they next couple drives with a couple of long passes, scored a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, they're breaking some tackles, so uh, attack a little bit better and also uh, making some big plays throwing the ball. So, you know, kids are just going to have to make plays, just like always, and uh, they will. And so uh, uh, we told them that they're pretty quick to move the ball. But, uh, our kids did step up on that fourth thing down here. Uh, Nick hurt his knee. He won't be back in the second half. Okay. Um, when you guys nice, okay. you guys have answered them. Yes, our kids made plays, and so... Yeah, they're just showing a tremendous amount of courage, and they're coming back and, and playing like they're capable of playing. So, Good luck in the second half, Thank Coach. You Thank you very much. And back to you guys in the booth. We'll be right back with the second half. Thank you, Roger. And uh, Coach DJ Sigurdsson, we really appreciate the uh, time and effort that the uh, coach has put in to help us out. And Mr. Brian Holt, the athletic director here at the high school, too, has always been very helpful to us. And... There go the co-captains for the Wolves out. <coughs> That's Jimmy McCary, uh, number 19, Scott Yingling, the ASB president. Number 23, Elkina Montgomery, and 79, Brian Miller out there. Well, our floor director, uh, Pat, told us uh, that we might have had a little audio problem on there. Of course, we're using a wireless mic down there, so if we didn't quite get it all, we do apologize. Uh, it's our first time with the wireless situation, and our uh, our on-the-field reporter, Roger. Uh, so we, we, we couldn't tell you up here. We don't have audio <laughs> return, but uh, we're looking forward to a great second half of action as the two teams huddle around their coaches, get last-minute instruction. Yeah, that was actually uh, Richard Cosper out there instead of Elkanah Montgomery. Uh, I saw the three, but it was 3-3 three, three instead of 2-3. So here at the beginning of the second half, all tied up, 13-13. And I was pretty impressed with the South Kidsap offense. When they got their heads into it and started driving, they made it happen. They, they really did. Uh, much improved from our, uh, the game over Cascade. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the game uh, last week. Uh, they did score 14 points in that game. Uh, 
They did get doubled up, though, in the score. Well, and they had a chance, too, Larry, to win that one pretty close to the end of the game. They had a couple chances right there in the fourth quarter and just couldn't convert. Well, uh, I was only able to get a little bit into the article uh, that you brought with you tonight, Doc, uh, but they have really responded well. Uh, they're up to the challenge, uh, and uh, that's really the sign of character for the Wolves to uh, come back after that disappointing loss. Well, Walla Walla will be kicking off to begin the second half of action. Sean Reese, their kicker, kind of a low one, a uh, little bit of a squib there, but picked up nicely by Seward. And Adam Seward brings it up to the 34, 33 yard line, and that's where South Kidsap will begin. Seward muscles his way through for a few more yards on that play. Yeah, yes, indeed. And as Larry said, this is the uh, second game that we've done. And uh, we've tried a couple new things with the on field reporter. And uh, so if there is a few technical difficulties, we apologize. But uh, I think uh, kids have done a great job. And it's a, been a great pleasure to work with uh, you guys, CJ. Thanks, Doc. I'm sure everybody else, you know, very gratifying to uh, be here kind of working in the big show. Yeah, we want to, of course, thank uh, the folks from West Sound Community Television. Uh, besides myself, we got Mr. Garrett Syke, who's directing, and Patricia, who uh, is helping out, uh, doing a bunch of different things. She was on audio with you last, helping out in audio last week, and running around helping out tonight. We really appreciate their help and their effort from West Sound Community Television, and uh, this is great, great fun, and this is what community television should do and should be about, bringing great action like this to the folks. Oh, yes, indeed. Great action. Our South Kitsap Wolves fighting hard. They're a second-half team. I wouldn't be surprised to see some explosions here. Well, so far, we're going to bring up third down, about uh, four to go for the first down. That both plays have been up through the middle. Coach Sigerson, he likes the run. He says you got to establish the run in a high school game. Well... I wonder if they're going to try that little uh, quick out, quick pass to the right side, which has been successful two times and has not yet been stopped effectively by the Blue Devils. Uh, or maybe they'll just go for the gut. <laughs> Once well, again, we have uh, Dustin Booth splitting out to the right side. I believe that's where he was on the last two plays. Oh, pitch. Pitch to Montgomery. He's got a little bit of running room. He's got more than a little bit of running room, and he picks up a nice about 15-yarder there for a first down. And boy, I like to watch Elkano. Once he gets a, just a little bit of space, he turns on the afterburners. Montgomery just blows by the defense, gets a, gets a, good lot, uh, gets a couple more yardage on that play. Well, we also had uh, the two guards, Kevin Morrow, number 61, and Mitch Morey, uh, coming downfield and making a couple of key blocks there uh, that enabled Montgomery to make that yardage. Carey comes up over the center for the first down. Hand off to number 34. That's Roger Cooper. And looks like he's going to lose about two and a half, three yards. And we got a player down on the... Well, he's up now. He was down and he's up again. He's okay. That was number 54. Ian Cairns is the starting center for the South Kitsap Wolves, but it looks like he's okay, and uh, Cairns plays uh, DL, defensive line, on the D. Correction, Doc, that was number 34, Roger Cooper. Oh, okay. Oh, Doc, you got, your eyes must be going. Oh, I guess, <laughs> I don't have the binoculars. There's a quick run up through the middle, and picking up about seven yards on that one is John Zamo. Oh, you got it right that time. <laughs> a little easier in those single digits. Yeah, that's for sure. And it's tough on, especially the down linemen. It's really tough to see those numbers of those guys on the down line there. And, uh, you know, they you got to give those offensive linemen tons of credit for the job they do down there in the trenches. That's well, trench warfare down there, Larry. Well, that's a very important job. Fake. Carey hanging on to it, rolls out, nice pass, and got it! Great reception by Dust, Dustin Booth once again, and that was just about the same play. 
But Dustin, once again, spins right by the defense, looks for that color with his strong legs and just reaches up and grabs that ball right before he goes out of bounds. Great play. Well, excellent execution that time by Jimmy McCary, the quarterback, uh, holding holding the backs, the linebackers, uh, for a moment there with an excellent fake and then coming off the little rollout off that and then a quick delivery down the sideline to Dustin Booth who has been doing a great job getting to that sideline. Had a couple where he just missed getting it down close to the end zone, but uh, I think that's his third reception at least now tonight. First down, the ball on the Blue Devil 10-yard line for South Kitsap. Hand off to, Z to uh, Zamo, and he picks up a yard maybe on that one. I have been really impressed with McCary's passes. Jimmy McCary has uh, really, it seems like just in the last couple of weeks, really improved that. That was a nice spiral on that last one. Excellent pass from Jeremy Alakwa from the Blue Devils, uh, number 56, making an excellent stop on that play. Uh, it doesn't look like he got much on it, if any. Oh, power back there. Three behind the quarterback. Quick pass and uh, Blue Devils Lineman's hand or linebacker's hand got the way to knock that one down. It's going to bring up a third down and quite a bit of yards to go for the first down. So this is a big one, third and nine. I, was that number 20, CJ? Did you happen to see that? It looked like it was number 20 who made that. Uh, who got his hand up in the air, Toy Mitchell, I believe. Uh, Toy Mitchell is a defensive lineman, and that's where the ball got tipped right there at the line. Tory Mitchell, five foot nine, got a nice reach on that ball and was able to tip it right up. Third down and nine. Carry hands off. Oh, a nice try there. He didn't pick it up, but Roger Cooper got quite a bit of yard. He just going to bring up a fourth and about five to go. So this is big decision time now. Tied ball game, eight minutes in the third quarter to go. And they are bringing on the kicking team, it looks like, Doc. Uh, going to go for the three points. Uh, must have good confidence. Uh, they're at the right hash mark, so this will be a little bit more difficult than if it was right in the middle of the field because the angle is quite a bit steeper from this side. Gonna have to be a good kick. As the old saying goes, some points are better than none. That's right. <laughs> and Dustin Booth doing the holding. And it's up and it's no good. Off to the left. That was pretty close. That one came pretty darn close. No good. So Walla Walla would take over on uh, about their own seven yard line. First and ten. Well, I think that was the right play. Well, unfortunately, uh, they couldn't get any points out of it, but uh, I think they can take a lot of confidence away with them. Uh, if they can hold them here and one possession, a one, two, three and out, which would be ideal, they can gain really good field position, and I'm sure they can get back there and do it again. Ah, oh, nice defensive stop. Ball's loose. South gets it. Great play, and a lot of credit has to go to John Zamo, who grabbed hold of the runner first of all. Once again, Zamo staying on that runner, making him confused with that ball. They got about two guys behind him that just jumped right on it. I believe uh, Nolan Sodi, Sodi uh, was the lineman that came up with that ball, number 75. At least he sure got a big tap on the <laughs> back from his buddies out there. And this is just what the Wolves need, like they did with Cascade get the turnover ratio in their favor. Well, I've been waiting for a big defensive play. And that might be it. Uh-oh! Uh, that time McCary doesn't quite get the snap from the center, but he alertly falls on the ball. So South Kitsap maintains possession, but uh, it'll be second down and 10 to go. Double recovered by Drew McCary. Seven minutes, four seconds left in this third quarter of action here. And again, we want to urge you fans, come on out and see the game live next Friday. It'll be Mount Tahoma from Tacoma. And uh, our South Kinsap Wolves will be hosting them here at Joe Knowles. And uh, then it's going to be about three weeks between home games. So you guys better get out and come to the game next Friday if you want to see one of these great games live. 
McCary with the pass right through Destin Booth's hands, and Destin Booth gets a hit, and that's the quarterback for the Blue Devils, Andy Thompson, who delivered one of those blows. Good defensive play. Had two defenders close to him. Andy Thompson and Andy Thompson are on the coverage. Go, so that one play, they did lose a yard or so, and... Uh, this is a big third down. It would certainly be nice to take advantage of the momentum uh, that they not only showed on offense, but definitely with that big defensive recovery of the fumble. Well, Jimmy Newell comes in to replace Dustin Booth. He's probably a little out of breath right now. Pitch out, fumble on the pitch, and once again, South Kitsap luckily falls on it, but that's gonna bring up a fourth down and a ton of yards. This is a tough position. It's really that's almost kind of too close to the punt. And I don't think you're going to go for a field goal at the high school level from this distance. <laughs> I seriously doubt it, as that would be nearly a 40-yard kick with the 10 yards that's included in the end zone. Uh, perhaps uh, perhaps we'll see that fly pattern again on the right-hand side. That's uh, Jimmy uh, Newell stays in, and he'll be split to the right. Fourth and 16 yards for the first down. Well, a handoff through the middle to Brent, Brandon, Brandon Trent, Trent the in the ball game. He didn't get a whole lot of yards, so South Kitsap has to turn the ball over. Nice shot of the crowd. Like I said, we got almost a packed house. Bam's out here playing. And it's great. This is football weather now. It was almost too hot last time, and now we got some real football. Well, I was noticing on the interview that the the, the breath was very visible. <laughs> First down for the Blue Devils, and right away, Thompson airs it out. He's got a man out there. Oh, a beautiful job of defense by Dustin Booth. What an excellent job of defense. Dustin, once again, uh, they're staying alive in this game. Gets in there on defense and offense, blocking passes, receiving passes, just doing a great job in this game. Now that play, Doc, uh, like you said before, that it was a little bit of a wobbly pass. Didn't quite have the tight spiral. Uh, Dustin doing a fantastic job staying with it. He had his eye on the ball. It seemed like from the time it left the quarterback's hand, he was able to get under it with a great defensive play. Uh, brings up second and 10 for the Blue Devils. They have a little bit of uh, mix up in the backfield, but they still managed to pick up about six Foster yards Robinson on that going up through the middle. Up third and Third and a little five, under five yards five. to go for their first down. A little deceptive that time. I was kind of expecting the second man to get the uh, ball when in fact the first dive uh, player got the handoff. But uh, as you say, Doc, we got third and about five. And this is the time uh, the Wolves need to stiffen up and uh, stuff them. Thompson looks over the defense. Quick drop back. He wants to pass. He finds the receiver open. Tackle missed. And number 84 for the Blue Devils gets a first down. That was Nathan, Nathan Nichols. Nichols on the reception. Well, he fumbled uh, after he hit the ground, which, of course, means the ball is down. Um, Boy, there were five wolves about five yards away from the, the receiver that time. And uh, it was a quick drop, as you said, good execution. Nathan Nichols, six foot tight end, able to work it in uh, through the center. Well, we got the referees huddling around the ball there. I think they're talking about where they're gonna get pizza after the game there. Um, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Doesn't sound Kalak. bad on the menu. Clock is running again. 4.43 left to go here. Uh-oh. Oh, a big hole up through the right side and managed uh, a tackle by a shirt. Austin Robinson Hanging onto the shirt there, but that was a Richard nice Costa move. And once again, the flags move another 10, 12 yards downfield. It's time well, for the defense to toughen up. Well, that was you know just your basic quick dive and Probably the guard in the center on the left side were uh, doing the, the blocking on that and opened up a great hole. There he is again, number three, escapes one tackle, finally brought down in the backfield. 
Number three is Austin Robertson. Austin Robertson again on the carry, stopped by Dustin Booth. There's a now you can player. slowly feel the momentum, maybe go in the other direction. Well, you know, uh, the Wolves kind of self-destructed on that last offensive series, and you know, sometimes that, that gets the defense uh, down a little bit now. Uh, I'm sure that the Wolves will be able to fight back as they always do, but uh, we need the defense to just uh, settle down here a little bit, play their position, not get sucked into any movement, and uh, see if you can't shut them down here because they are at the approximately the 35 yard line and they have shown uh, in the first half that they can sustain a drive. Uh, yes, and we've also, in uh, high school ball, you've got a lot of the players playing both offense and defense. Oh, well, looks like there must have been a penalty there because the mall has moved back first down, five-yard penalty. So we've got first and 15. Man in motion. Long drop back, uh -oh. a screen. And again, Robertson was the recipient of that deep drop back that time by the quarterback. And he had a wall of white and blue out there in front of his receiver. Robertson working two plays in a row. Uh, maybe got a total of about maybe 20 yards on both plays. Well, um, I'm not sure if that was uh, an audible or not. Uh, if it wasn't, it was a very fortuitous call for the <laughs> Devils because they uh, the Wolves were showing stunt and they had several people coming in and then the linemen just uh, set that screen up very nicely. And again, man in motion. Hand off to Robertson once again. And I don't know, I don't think he made the first down. Let's see where they're going to mark it. Uh, Austin Robertson again yep, on the carry. he did. It's hard to table. see down on that uh, end of the north end of the field as they get further down exactly where the ball is placed. Those lines are not quite as bright, probably due to the rain. <laughs> well, John Zamel out there calling the signals, it looks like, on defense or uh, at least at the head of the uh, Hey, defensive there huddle there. You got some of the fans there with the painted faces, CJ. Yeah, well, I painted my hair earlier today. We got our school spirit, our colors, maroon, uh, gold, and uh, white. And that was definitely the gold man. Outside rollout pass. And once again, the Blue Devils managed to connect. That was Thompson to number Toy 20, Mitchell Toy receptive. Mitchell. Montgomery Adam Seward made right the uh, contact tackle right there. Just dove right on him. Well, still, you got to stop that somewhere. Where do you stop it? Are you stop it in the backfield? Or do you stop it uh, trying to sack the quarterback? Well, I mean, it's a combination. You got to get a rush on him. Uh, it seemed to me that uh, there wasn't anybody on him at the point that he received the pass there. I don't know if that's an assignment for the Wolf or not. And that one was not a big gainer for Walla Walla. That would bring up a second down, an eight. Austin Robertson, Austin carry, Robertson once Dylan again, making Sorry. that run. Well, Robertson is doing a lot of the running for the Walla Walla Blue Devils. And uh, first half, it was Matt Hamlin on the receiving end for the Blue Devils of those two touchdown passes. And Montgomery comes out of the ball game for a quick respite. So we've got second down, eight to go for the Blue Devils. And a short little pass over the lineman there. And once again, John Zamel standing in there and breaking that play up with uh, two of his teammates right in back of him. Uh, they were probably lucky, the Blue Devils that time, that that ball was not intercepted. <laughs> Looks like our South Kitsap Wolves are starting to uh, tighten their defense, getting their heads in the game. Well, they're down in the red zone there, and that's really where you need it, CJ. Too true. They're down. right. Roll out, Thompson. Nobody open. He's going over to this side. The man broke free. There's the touchdown. That was Matt Hamlin who uh, received the pass. Six yeah, Hamlin. Once on the again, Hamlin the scores for the Blue Devils. And boy, they had the coverage for a moment, but uh, Hamlin just ran away from it. Well, uh, I. They had the coverage on the wrong side. Uh, you know, that, that was a design play where everybody's going right and the one receiver from the left side uh, 
faked like he was coming to the middle and just broke to the outside, and he was basically all alone out there. A nicely executed play by the Blue Devils, who do score, it looks like, the and extra Reese's point. And PAT is good. So the, the Blue Devils uh, lead our fighting wolves 20 to 13 with two minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the third quarter of action. Well, CJ, you got some more notes on uh, other stuff coming up? Oh, yes, we do. Looks like Mr. Ken Young will speak on the joys of volunteering and tutoring children at the uh, Senior Potluck at Givens Community Center at 11 a.m. on October 5th. If you uh, would like some more information, contact the Givens Community Center at 895-5720. Well, I can testify that there is a lot of joy in volunteering. Doc, you and myself have been volunteering for myself about six, seven years now, and uh, you've been doing it for much longer. And uh, there is a lot of satisfaction to be gained by giving of yourself. Well, again, too, we're very happy uh, to be working with the South Kitsap Advanced Video Production class here at the high school, uh, along with West Sound Community Television, to bring this great action to your fans. And this is just the second year of the program, first year for the advanced class, right, CJ? Uh, that's correct. And so we're really looking forward to a lot more great, fun events coming to the folks of Kitsap County here from South Kitsap. Reese with the kick. This is roller on the ground. Montgomery finally comes up with it. And South Kitsap will start on their own uh, side of the field at about the 30-yard line. Well, that's a difficult, difficult uh, kick to cover like that. Uh, it's not going real deep, but it's uh, getting behind the up guys and in front of the deep receivers. And, of course, the shape of the football is making it going all squirrely as it hits the ground. Uh, <laughs> they almost banged helmets there for a minute, trying to decide who was going to take it, but uh, covered it, and uh, we have fairly good field position here at the 30. Carey still got it on the rollout. Oh, a nice attempt there by Jimmy Newell to pull that ball down. Uh, Jimmy just about had it. He got hit right at the last second. I think the hit caused him to uh, drop the ball. Shrug it off. We got another one. Well, somewhere near the last second. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I was going to say. It, I thought uh, we might see a yellow hanky, but we didn't. It was pretty close. And, uh, you know, I, clean, I think man. they got the right call. Yeah. It's just they're both going for the ball, and they both have a right to the ball. And uh, good defensive play that time, and, and uh, a good play by uh, Jimmy to try and get it, too. Just I like a hard fought battle there. Like you said, the key is both going for the ball. The defender looked and saw where the ball was. Up through the middle, Elkanah Montgomery gets about five yards. And yeah, that'll bring up a third and five. It's a Montgomery just working through the middle, using all of his strength to get as many yards as possible. Well, Doc, we got uh, third and looks like about six or seven here. And uh, Jimmy McCary is getting his instructions from coach on the play that he wants to call. And we have uh, Booth's out to the right side split. And uh, is that Jimmy Newell on the left? I can't see his number from here. Quick drop back this time and blocked at the line of scrimmage. Blocked and uh, <laughs> Dustin slipped on that as well. So we will have a fourth down here. And the punning team will come onto the field as the uh, Wolves turn it over and it'll be defense again. Well, South Kitsap down 20 to 13 with a minute 17 left to go in the third quarter of action. And Jimmy McCary doing the punting also. It's kind of interesting not to have a quarterback as a punter, you know. It always leaves the option open for some trick plays. This Very time true. it's a boot. Air catch signal by the Walla Walla Blue Devils. For the Blue Devils, that's Toy Mitchell. Takes it on the 39-yard line. And that's where Walla Walla will begin this series. Jimmy McCary, uh, also one of those players with uh, strong legs, uh, squats 395 pounds. Oh, 
Well, again, it's time for some uh, defensive heroics here by the South Kitsap Fighting Wolves. And that time, about a three yard gain by number 23. Adam Seward coming up to make the stop run. Seth Cornelius, Seth Cornelius carry, stopped by Adam Seward. Cornelius ahead for about a yard. When you see Adam Seward nine. play, you can always see the determination he's, he feels. He's got a lot of love for the sport and a lot of love for his teammates and for his school. He's very determined to do anything he can for the South Kitsap Fighting Wolves. Well, the camaraderie in football is unmatched in my opinion in any other sport. Drop back. Oh, Thompson's receiver and the defender both went down. He got up and uh, almost got his fingers on that ball. That was number four, that was Matt Hamlin. Yeah, that's caused a lot of problems for the Wolves this evening. Well, the, the uh, Blue Devils the quarterback and his receivers are developing or have developed over their uh, early season a fairly nice timing. And uh, it's been showing uh, tonight. 25 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Third and nine for the Blue Devils. Big defensive stand here for South Kitsap. Quick drop back, a long pass. Oh, a nice job of defense there by number eight, Jimmy McCary. Well, that was uh, <laughs> that was one of those plays that could have that call could have went either way. It <laughs> looked to me like the offensive player climbed up the back, just right up the back of number eight, Jimmy McCary, the quarterback and defensive back, who uh, did a great job. Uh, a little wind knocked out of him there, maybe. Well, the Blue Devils punting on fourth down. We've got about 12 seconds left to go in the quarter. Drop ball, but uh, covered up nicely by Jimmy Newell, I believe, is the one who fell on that. And that's where South Man, Kitsap will take over. 10 seconds on the clock. So we probably will have time for one play before the change of ends. Well, we have similar situation we had the first game against Cascade Dock where uh, the Wolves have fallen behind by one score in a PAT. And uh, it's gonna take a fourth quarter for them to come back and hopefully win this game tonight. Carry uh, out flare out to Dustin Booth. Booth makes about seven yards on that. It's about the fourth reception and the third time on that pass. And the clock's down to the 4 0. Third quarter of action over. At the end of three quarters, our Fighting Wolves down to the Walla Walla Blue Devils 20 to 13. Hey, LCJ, got to hold their breath here. Got 12 minutes to go. They need uh, that score for sure. Well, I can feel it. South Kitsap is going to explode. <laughs> You got some more notices there? I have a couple more notices here. Uh, statewide inner service and instructional planning for staff means no school for students the afternoon October 8th and all day October 9th. And down Man. there you see the band playing for the crowd. The crowd is on their feet with the cheerleaders doing their same dance been a tradition on South for quite a long time. What do they call it? Uh, I can't remember what they call it. I, I just I, like watching the cheerleaders. Well, that's very uh, commendable. Thank you very much. Well, they, they I, I tend to like that routine too. They, they go in pairs and uh, and each, each pair has a different move and uh, really the crowd gets into it as the crowd does the move and uh, great tune by the band. Set to go here with 12 minutes to play. What's even better is that even some of the football players know the moves that the cheerleaders do. <laughs> oh, McCary with a nice fake there. Oh, all threw it into a crowd though. That might have been ill-advised. And the guy for Walla Walla that got his hands on that ball is their quarterback, the all-around guy. Number, one, number uh, 71, David Strickland uh, was inches away from catching that pass. 
Well, I think it might have been headed towards Dustin Booth, but like I said, there were two defenders there, and it's, it's you don't want to throw in a crowd a whole lot, Larry. <laughs> well, it's 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 tough a little bit in the center of the field there because you know you got your safety, you got your linebackers dropping back, and if the corner uh, sees it coming, he can drift back there too. Oh, a nice handoff. That's a first down for South Kinsale. That was a nice looking play, and that was number 34, Roger Cooper. Roger Cooper. Picking up the first for South Kinsale. Roger Cooper uh, is a junior here at South. Oh, wow, he's a very big junior, too. He stands six foot two and a half inches. Well, uh, and Co one weighs 196. That's right, <laughs> very big guy. And Coach Sigerson is uh, rotating in some fresh legs there. Uh, really good strategy as we get into the fourth quarter here as. Uh, his other two backs, I believe, are going both ways. So uh, number 34 getting a chance to show his stuff and doing a fine job. Well, split out down to this side, we got Adam Seward. We got the eye formation as McCary comes over Ian Cairns, the center. He gives it to the second back through. I believe that was Elkanah Montgomery. Yes, indeed, and he makes a nice gain on the ground there. Good surge that time by the offensive line. Good execution as they Start to gain a little confidence here uh, with 11.29 to go in the third quarter. Well, I've been impressed with their ability to get some momentum going on these running plays. Larry. Most of the men right up through the gut. Well, the, the line is doing a good job, and you know that's what you need on your lineman. You need to get that offensive surge so that even if you know, you're not opening up big holes, you get the defensive guy going back on his heels a little bit. Quick drop back pass up in the air, oh boy. Oh boy, now we've yeah, got we the yellow play. hanky yeah, and it may be against South, Larry. It may be an offensive uh, interference there. Dustin Booth, yes, it looks like that because they're not moving down to that end of the field. <laughs> Dustin Booth, also, also a very determined player, very, very competitive. Well, that was not necessarily a bad move. Uh, you got, you had second down and two and that was overthrown and actually it looked uh, like the Blue Devil corner had a good chance of getting that ball so uh, better keep the ball than turn it over. Well again that was one of those kind of scary looking plays. The ball up in the air to a guy running down with two guys in white and blue surrounding him. <laughs> well yeah you know in the pros you know the might be able to put that on a clothesline, but you know when you're when you're 18 years old or 17, uh, <laughs> it's almost an impossible task. So now we've got the long third down, third and 14. McCary drops back, holds on to it, and once again the pass play broken up, and that was uh, Jimmy thrown to Jimmy Newell. He wasn't quite able to hold on to it. He had some. Uh, Good defense in his face there, grabbing at that ball. So it looks like SK is going to have to punt her away. Well, unlike that last pack, McCary did put some uh, pepper on that one. A nice line to it. Very quick snap. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to hold on to it. And even if he had caught it, there was still a lot of yardage to go to get to that first down. <laughs> That's true. Uh, we'll see what happens here if we can get that ball back past where that interception was. Carey gets the boot off. Good kick. Oh, yeah. And Walla Walla decides, I think, at the last moment to attempt to run back on that one. And they do not go very far. I believe that was Austin Robertson that uh, tried to move that one. Doc, your eyes are bad. That was number 20, Tolly Mitchell, who uh, received the punt and uh, just got hit right off the bat. Well, um, it looked, looked close to a... Uh, Looked like it was might be blocked there for a second. Now uh, I don't know if you noticed, Doc, but the kicker kind of held back his leg there. If he had kept his leg going forward, we might have get a rough on the kicker on that. Where's that? Up through the middle, and uh, the Blue Devils get a first down on that one. That was number three, Austin Robertson, with that hard run through the middle, avoiding all our defense. Now yeah, the defense is going to be really up tight now. Like you said, when the players play both Robinson offense and defense, Newell. fourth quarter, things people start getting tired. Legs start getting real tired. First and ten for the Blue Devils. Sure could use Kenyon at this point. 
Now again, right up through the middle. And thankfully, Robert Jimmy Newell hangs theory. on Jordan to the ankles the there of the Blue Devil to pull him down, or that was gone for the TD if Newell hadn't stopped that one. Well, uh, they're executing very well. They're carrying out their fakes. It's a little difficult from up here to tell where the ball's going, and, and that means it's probably the same kind of things happening to the defensive players. Uh, you get that mix, misdirection, backs going this way, that way, and before you know it, the guy's through the middle of the line and you're looking back towards your goal. You got strong to the right. Flare out pass to number four, and that's defended pretty well. Dustin Booth in on the tackle on that one, and Jimmy Newell's in. Matt Hamlin, the hand. receiver. Teaming Newell. up there. And they got about on five coverage. yards on that. Brings up a second and five for the Blue Devils. And we've got 9-19 left to go in the ball game. Now they're right over on this right side hash mark. Hand off to the first man through. And again, he's punching his way through. And once again, it's Austin Robertson. Robertson again on well, the third. Stop right yeah, through. Well, that's three times now on this drive that they've handed it right up the middle. I don't know exactly what's happening up there, but they, they have found something and they're doing it right because uh, they are coming right up the gut there. And uh, with that four-man line, uh, we're gonna have to get those middle linebackers to uh, plug that hole up. First and 10 for the Walla Walla Blue Devils. Thompson hands it to the back and once again, another five, six, seven yard gainer. Uh-oh, we've got a loose ball. South Kitsap signaling they have it. We haven't seen the ref signal. Yes, indeed. Really couldn't see the play on that, but uh, happy that we got possession. It looked like he came through with a nice gain, and, he had, and I think he just kind of let the ball back of him there. Yeah, they use a Keith Jacksonism. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. Well, that's definitely a big defensive play, and just what the doctor would have ordered for South Kitsap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the doctor could order me some pizza too. <laughs> 842 and South Kitsap takes over on their own 25 yard line. Hand off to Montgomery. Montgomery makes about a five yard run. He is quick, up to the very quick line. through the hole. He's not only quick, he has the ability to move. We've got another South Kitsap player down on the field. He's fighting his way back up. That's number 71, David Strickland. And He's standing, but uh, I think he's going to have to come out of the game. I didn't uh, see it, but you could tell he was in some pain. Well, from up here, it's very difficult to tell, but I think we can safely assume it is his right either knee or ankle. And he yeah, at is least he's nice good weight on it, so probably not too serious. Uh, you know, you get a stinger like that. And, uh, if you're able to keep moving and walking like he is, uh, chances are you will be able to return to the game. He's and coming over with the trainer, and they'll have a little talk. I sure hope Nick Kenyon will uh, be able to get back in uh, here this season. He's on the crutches right now out there on the sideline in his uh, letterman jacket, so he's not going to be back in tonight's ball game. that's for sure. Second and six to go for the first. Yes. And nice handoff. Elkanah found the hole, and he's got some yardage. First down. That was very reminiscent of the one he broke in the first game. Uh, fine, fine blocking on there. And he's got such nice quickness that if you can just get by the line of scrimmage with one, even one or two guys to go, I mean, uh, the chances are good he's going to break it very quick. Elkanah, probably uh, the fastest player on the football team. He's a five foot seven senior, weighing about 167 pounds. Very quick and agile, it seems. Ooh, a little bit of hurdle in there. I thought we were at the track meet for a moment there. That was uh, Roger Cooper. Roger up in the air. <laughs> Roger Absolutely. Cooper, uh, just really a nice over. hurdle uh, over the tackler who probably uh, was going for the knees. And you know, Doc, that's really not a good way to tackle is going to the knees. You want to get yourself low to the ground, bend your knees, and come up through the numbers and drive through. Yes, indeed, I remember that. Put the helmet on the numbers. 
Put that face mask right in her and drive them to their back. Second down and seven for the South Kitsap Wolves. McCary hands, no, oh, he keeps it. He's rolling out, he's got, uh-oh, and he got took down big time by the defensive pressure from Walla Walla. He's gonna lose about uh, 10 yards on that one. That's gonna bring up a third down. Well, both Jimmy Newell and Dustin Booth both covered very well that time by the corners and uh, McCary just had nowhere to go, doing the right thing, not turning it over. Uh, they were far enough out there that it was probably not possible for him to overthrow it into the end zone. So uh, making a good decision there, even though he lost uh, some yardage, we still have the ball and another opportunity to make first down. Now well, we've got a third and 15 coming up with six minutes and 44 seconds left in the ball game. South Kitsap down by seven. Let's see what the South Kitsap team can come up with on this play. Uh-oh. And I think it's going to be third and 20. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a quick kick. Well, I haven't heard of that for years, Larry. Don't date me now, Doc. <laughs> I've seen it, I've seen it, you know, within the last decade. <laughs> Shows you how old these two are. <laughs> All right, Sonny, just watch it now. <clears throat> CJ, even with his hurt leg, had to help us up to the up the stairs, didn't he? I didn't know what was going on when he first came up to the booth here. He had half his hair gray, and I thought, oh, well, that's the other interesting. Half <laughs> South Kitsap spirit, you can't deny it. There you go. Third and long, and McCary, again, he was looking to pass, but nobody was that's open, McCary, so he did what he could, and it's going to bring up a fourth and long. Well, either that or uh, else it was a design quarterback draw. Well, yeah, it could have been. Possibly, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, Look for a moment there, like we might break it. It's putting a lot of pressure there on the quarterback with a third and 20 to do a draw. Well, they hadn't used it yet, so <laughs> it, it, it's quite possible that was design play, but uh, we have fourth down with 5.43 to go, so the defense will have to stiffen up here, and uh, the offense needs to get the ball back one more time. That's a nice boot. Drives a Walla Walla player back a little bit. Good coverage. Yes, indeed. The receiver of that was number 20, Toy Mitchell, once again from Walla Walla Blue Devils. There's about five South Kitsap fighting wolves surrounding him there, and that's uh, definitely what we needed. Pin him back a little bit. I believe the ball is at about the 28-yard like line, somewhere in there. That's right. Walla Walla is going to start on their own 28. And this is the time for the defense to stop the offense. See if we can get a three and out here, Doc. This is what we need. Remember last uh, game with Cascade? There it is. Once again, they're just going to be content to run that uh, over the middle Robinson, over the guard. Not even going out around the end. Well, that's their goal right now is to hang on to the ball, play a ball control game, grind it out on the ground as much as possible, and chew up as much of that clock as they can. And, of course, uh, the Wolves have to try and shut them down. Second and four for the Walla Walla Blue Devils. Thompson up over center. Looks at the defense. Gets the snap. And that time, it didn't go anywhere. That was some good defense by that interior line. Once again, that Austin interior Robinson line, carry, nice and tight, by Brian Miller. That run or the pass, just kind of combusted in there and just stopped the play. Well, in the Cascade game, the Wolves got the ball with, I believe, three minutes and 51 seconds left in the game and managed to score. We now have 427 left, a third down and three, and this is probably your game-breaking play right here. And Thompson keeps it, and nobody is fooled, and a great tackle by Adam Seward. Adam Seward takes down the big six-foot, three, 205-pounder senior from Walla Walla. Way to go, Adam. And that's gonna bring up a fourth. They lost about two yards on that. Fourth and four for Walla Walla. It looks like they're gonna have to punt it off. Doc, we got exactly the same scenario. 3.51 to go, and the clock still running. The ball being turned over to the Wolves. I know they have confidence they can do it because they've done it before. So let's uh, get behind them here and see what happens. Jimmy Newell back to receive the punt for the Wolves. I'm wondering if the public's thinking that this is a replay. Uh oh 
Going to move back five yards. We've had a lot of delay of games tonight. He must have a short ticker on that stopwatch of his. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that that time is kept by the back judge, perhaps, or the head linesman. And uh, because there is no there is no clock available on the field, so they have to keep it moving. We'll try it again. Little signals for a fair catch, and Seth Kitsap will start their offense on their own 37-yard line. Nice spiral on that kick this time, and Newell making a fine decision there. At the last minute, uh, raising his arm in the air to get the fair catch, and uh, we have the ball with only 70 yards to go, Doc. Well, three minutes and 25 seconds to do it in. Uh, once again, a great shot there of the cheerleaders rousing up the crowd. One question comes, where's our mascot, Roscoe? I haven't seen Roscoe anywhere. Oh, a nice play up the middle. Look at that push there. First of all, the offensive line Bell pushes up in the hole, the and then just some darn good running there. Montgomery ahead for seven. It's second and three. Yeah, I, you're right. Don't see Roscoe out there. Don't see Roscoe anywhere. This is bad. <laughs> Maybe he's out baying at the moon. We might have to have uh, our field reporter, Roger Fossum, go look into that. Where is Roscoe? Uh-oh, Elkanah gets hit in the backfield that time is going to lose about two yards on that again, one. They were expecting that. And once again, we're up to third down, five to go for the South Kidsap Wolves. Well, they got three up there on the board, but I think it's more than three. Well, John Zamel comes back in the game. He'll be in the forward position of the eye. Quick pass, oh no! Luckily, the Blue Devil player dropped that ball, which looked like it was almost passed directly to him, Seth Cornelius. And there was just some uh, miscommunications uh, there between receiver and quarterback. Well, Lady Luck was on our side right there because uh, he didn't even have to move. Uh, fortunately, he had a little bit of a stone hands there. Well, we've got a timeout on the field. We've got two minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Fourth down, four yards to go. Coach is going to have to go for it, I think. Absolutely. Well, CJ, how you like your first one, your first game? Well, this is uh, well, that's my first one announcing. Uh, second game total. First one did the audio too. Got another a little announcement uh, for the folks at home. South Kitsap School District welcomes the application of substitute teachers. Contact the di district office at 876-7300 for more information on substitute teaching. I'm sure the school district would like you to call if anybody's interested. Well, that's great information to know too because there are, I'm sure, a lot of people out there that have their credentials that uh, work as substitutes, so give the district a call, get your name in on the list. Well, guys, this is a big, big, big fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, it's only fourth and four. Uh, oh, five. But. Hand yes. off to Montgomery. Breaks to the outside. He's got the first down. Well, a great play by South Kitsap, walking it into their uh, their big guy Montgomery. He's just been kind of he's been a key player the whole game. Wouldn't you say so, Gary? Well, there's been, he's, he's definitely one of them. There's been a few key players that, you know, these guys that are going both ways and uh, are really doing a fine job. It's not easy to do that for a whole game. Hand off to McGarry once again. This time he gets a little less, about three or four yards on that play. We've got under two minutes to go. We don't have a two minute timeout here in the high school game like we do in the pros. Uh, we've got 157, 147 actually. The clock keeps ticking, no timeouts, and South Kidsap has still got a ways to go. Second and six. As they say in all sports, it's crunch time, ladies and gentlemen. Carey looks to pass. He's got his completion, number three, Jimmy Newell. 
It's going to move the ball downfield a ways. It's still not far enough, I don't think, for the first down. It looks like he's got oh, about yes, a yard. He, oh, he, he got the first. Yeah, right. Jimmy Newell making a great catch. Now the time is first running, down, and time is going to become real important here. we got a minute and a half left to go. Our Fighting Wolves down by seven. Showing a lot of poise in this drive. Hand off to Montgomery. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and finally gets pulled down hard by number 58 for the Montgomery Blue Devils. Who hangs on Jeremy Olala. And we're at the one minute mark. Time still ticking. I don't know how many timeouts they have, but uh, they might want to consider using them pretty quickly. McCary's going for it all. Oh, let's see if there, no interference call, but the clock will stop on the incomplete pass, so that'll give him a chance to take a moment and think about things. We've got 48 seconds left to go in the ball game. Third and four for the South Kitsap Wolves, down by seven. And Montgomery comes back into the ball game. Both uh, Dustin and Newell, Newell split. To Montgomery. Montgomery gets through. He's got the first down. There will be a brief stoppage of the clock, I believe, as the chains are moved. No, yeah. As soon as those chains get set back up, the and clock will start running run. again. First 40 seconds, goal. first and 10. Doc, Doc, I need overtime. <laughs> I need it. Well, at this rate, 29, 28 seconds. Let's go Wolves, you can see the fire in their hearts. They're gonna do it, I can see it. McCary keeps it, a keeper that time. Out of bounds, get out of bounds. Yep, he got out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 15 seconds to go. Oh, whoa, Nelly, this McCary, time. McCary, I'm the keeper, out of bounds by Oh boy. Well, the excitement is really here tonight. This is a great finish to a great played ball game by both teams. 15 seconds to go on the, what is that, Doc, about the 10 or so? It looks like it, about uh, maybe the 12. 15. Second down and one, but at this point, that's irrelevant. You got 15 seconds to punch it into the end zone. They're giving it to Montgomery. He's going outside to the left. He's got the room, and he's down. Let's see if they call the timeout. Clock is stopped. Apparently, he went out of bounds to stop the clock. Montgomery down to the eight. Nine seconds left to go in this ball game. Oh boy, oh boy, and the timeout. Showed a lot of desire. You could just see him straining with his every muscle in his body, trying to break that free. Doing a good job getting out of bounds there. I wasn't quite sure if uh, he was actually going to get the call out of bounds, and I'm, I'm not sure that he did because they called the timeout. Well, they're at about the eight. Eight yard line, it looks like. Not, got, only, not, only, not only Desire out there on the field, Desire out there in the stands, Desire up here in the booth uh, for, oh boy, for the for junior sure. in here. I want my team to win. That's for sure. Well, with nine seconds, I think at this level, you probably got one play. Maybe in the pros you'd have two, but uh, two or three even. But I think here we got about one play, especially if it's a running play. I don't know the timeout situation. I don't know if SK has another timeout or not. If it's a, if it's going around the end, you probably got one. If you're going up the middle and you have any timeouts left, so I'm not sure if we do or not. I'm not either. Maybe two, but uh, you know, maybe uh, we're gonna go to Dustin on that right side like they've done three times already tonight. mccarry has got a hold of it. He's got a man wide open, out of his hands. Three seconds, the clock will stop. They'll have one more shot at it. Well, I don't know if I'm psychic or what, Doc, but it was out to that right side with a nice fake. And Booth was open. He was open. Looks like he got his hands on the ball a little bit. We got one more opportunity to get it in the end zone, and it doesn't matter if there's any time left or not. If you get it in, you get the chance for the point. That's right, that's right. We just see the energy flowing through the stand. Everybody's on their feet, cheering South Kitsap Wolves on and on. The cheerleaders doing their thing. Everybody's just pumped. One more play left. It's definitely crunch time. Yeah, we don't mean Nestle crunch time. 
Oh no. <laughs> the type of crunch, this does not taste good. Well, one thing about this uh, year's edition of the South Kid South Wolves team, they're exciting. <laughs> it's great. We've had uh, come from behind win in our first game. And let's hope we can get at least a tie here and get into. Ooh, well, this is it. Three seconds left to go in the ball game, so this play is the make it or break it play. You have to carry the first. first time he's in the shot. We got we've got four four count them receivers wide. Oh, up through the middle! Uh, uh oh, and we've got a flag down, and I believe it's going to be against South Kidsap. Yes, it is, and the game is over. South Kidsap. Coming up on the short end in tonight's ball game to the Walla Walla Blue Devils, 20 to 13. And look at those guys out there celebrating, and you got to give them credit. They played a good ball game tonight. Well, they played an excellent ball game, as did the Wolves. Uh, there's no no shame in losing when you uh, give it your best effort, and they certainly did that tonight, showing a lot of character coming on back. We just uh, we just congratulate the Blue Devils on a fine game. Well, that was a fun, I like that call too at the end. That was just a great call. Four receivers split out and McCary holding on to it, trying to take it up the middle. Well, I, I agree, Doc. Uh, kind of a quarterback draw there. Uh, had everybody kind of going every which way. Uh, looked like we might have got a little motion there, I think is what it was. I yep. saw the arm coming out from the elbow there for illegal motion. And of course, if it's an offensive penalty, game over. That's right. and. Uh, I just really enjoy this game, and I enjoy this aspect where the teams congratulate each other. We never used to do it exactly like this, and I think that, that they're just showing great sportsmanship uh, in congratulating each other and congratulate both teams for a well-fought game. Indeed, well-fought. Uh, South Kitsap tried to pull it off. Blue Devil shot him down with very, very good defense. But uh, got to give both teams a lot of credit. Both played an outstanding and intense game. Well, yes, indeed, that was an intense game. Quite an ending on that one. Now, unfortunately, not the ending that us South Kidsap fans would have liked to have seen. But that's the way it goes. That's why they call it a game. And again, this was a non-league competition. So in the long hall of things. Uh, South Kitsap is still in their league 0-0 zero, zero as far as uh, that goes. Well, I think they just showed tremendous character tonight. Um, you know, they had to struggle back and uh, it was hard fought all the way to the end and, you know, just coming this far away from completing their purpose. Uh, just showing great character, Doc. Well, we got a lot of Thank yous that I want to run through real quick, starting with the South Kitsap Video Production Class, who did a great job on uh, tonight's game. Uh, we apologize for a couple of technical difficulties at the beginning, but uh, everybody got it worked out, and it looks great. And, of course, we want to thank Mike Downham, our executive producer and the video instructor here at South Kitsap, for everything that he's done. And believe me, this is a lot of extra time that Mike's putting in, and... Uh, I uh, know we really appreciate it, and the kids in the program appreciate it, and I hope the community appreciates it. We want to thank the folks from West Sound, myself, Garrett Syke as our director tonight, and Patricia Ann, who's been helping out in a lot of different things, and our partner, Mr. Roger Fossum, doing some field reporting for us, which we really appreciate. And, of course, up here in the booth, we've got C.J. Lupica and Mr. Larry Rowe, the old man from ICU Productions, helping out. So you fans, come on out next Friday night. It's Mount Tahoma, first round of the division, and uh, that's the ones that South Kitsap needs to win to get into the playoffs uh, at the end of the season. So come on out to the stadium next Friday to watch that game, and then you can tune in. The day after, watch the replay on Channel 3 Falcon, Channel 12 TCI at high noon on Saturday as the South Kitsap Wolves host the Mount Tahoma Thunderbirds. I'm the doctor, Doc Parr, saying we'll see you soon.